Hello friends, I am Aryan Guru, working as assistant professor in Sheridan Institute Technology College of Engineering. Today we are going to see the different type of surveys in the road work. This is module number 6. I will come you in this particular module number 6. Then first we will see the necessity. When the question of constructing a new road arises due to the public demand or some strategic reason, a primary investigation is carried out to examine whether this road is necessary or not. And then the following points are to be kept in mind at the time of such investigation. First point, the total population benefited by the project. Then the number of villages, towns, industrial places, etc. to be connected should be noted. Then agricultural products, industrial products, minerals, etc. are likely to be conveyed through the proposed road and thus help the development of trade in the country. Then prospect of tourism, if any, has to be mentioned. Similarly, strategic importance for the defense of the country and any other information related to the project should be noted. Then the next step is marking the tentative alignment. After primary investigation regarding the justification of constructing a new road, the tentative alignment or alignments are marked on the general map and contour map of the area through which it is expected to pass should be shown. While marking the tentative alignment, the following points should be considered. First point, the proposed road should connect a sufficient number of villages, towns, industrial places, places of religious importance, etc. Then the alignment should be taken in such a way that unnecessary cutting and banking can be avoided. If the alignment crosses a river, it should be so per uh, perpendicularly pass through the shortest width of the road. The alignment should not pass through the religious places like temples, churches, mosques, etc. or burial grounds, burning huts and so on. The alignment should be taken completely through valuable should not be taken through valuable agricultural area. Then following point should be considered whenever we are doing the recurrent survey for the road project. First, the magnetic bearing of the lines alignment are measured by prismatic compass and noted in a field book. Then the distances around the alignment are measured approximately by placing uh, and is taken and is recorded. The object and nature of the ground on both sides of the alignment up to 50 meter are noted in the field book. Then the obstacle like religious places or valuable structures, if any, should be suitably crossed over. Then if the tentative alignment crosses a river obliquely or passes through a wide cross section of it, then the alignment is diverted suitably to cross the river perpendicularly and through its shortest width. All other important points like railway crossing, canal crossing, etc. should be noted. Then the highest flood level ever attained and the discharge record for the last 10 years should be collected from the appropriate authorities to design the culverts and bridges. Then preliminary records should be prepared uh, of properties eligible for compensation. After recurrent survey, a suitable alignment or alignments are selected for preliminary location survey for detailed investigation to obtain most economical alignment. The preliminary survey is done in the following ways. First point, the starting point of the project is marked by pillar. Then the file leveling is done to connect the nearby GTS, that is Great Technological Survey Benchmark or Permanent Benchmark with the starting point of the project. Then a prismatic compass survey is conducted to prepare a route survey map covering about 50 meter on both sides of the alignment. Sometimes a plane table survey is done in order to obtain the route survey map. Then the longitudinal leveling is done along the alignment at regular intervals say 20 meter or 40 meter. Then the magnetic bearing of each line should be noted in the level book. Then cross sections are taken at regular intervals say 100 meter and permanent benchmarks will be established as suitable places along the alignment for future references. Further, in the preliminary location survey, the cross section of river, nala, etc. should be taken separately. In the case of big rivers, additional data should be collected for designing the bridges. The following points should be kept in mind. First point, cross section at 100 meter intervals are taken about 500 meter upstream and 5 meter uh, distance downstream of the bridge side. Then, High flood level ever attained should be noted. 
then the boring should be done on the river bed to find the depth of foundation of the pier then the nature of erosion and score should be noted then the preparation of drawing in the drawing prepared should include the following root survey map to suitable scale then longitudinal section with formation level then the cross section with formation width and side slopes then contour map of the strip of land along alignment then the design of curve with setting out table then mass diagram for earthwork then the office work includes the total land width required is marked on the root survey map then to estimate the quantity of cutting as well as filling <coughs> then the design and cost estimate for culverts and bridges <coughs> cost estimate of five wars if any estimate for compensation required estimate of road surface construction and total cost of project for the tentative alignment then in the final location survey the most economical alignment is selected by analyzing the merits and demerits cost of construction etc for the proposed alignment after preliminary location survey before the approval of the project is obtained from the higher authorities the final location survey is completed in all respect the following steps are taken for final location survey the center line is marked by stout pegs or pillars at intervals of 30 meter then the total land width required is marked by pillars at regular intervals say 30 meter and the tangent point and intersection point of the curves are properly marked by pillars then a final record is prepared for properties eligible for compensation and then in, in the final pro, uh, project report after completion of all investigation work survey work design of different structures and total estimate for the project the report should be prepared and submitted to the higher authorities for approval the report prepared should include formation information related to the following <coughs> first we will see the necessity when the question of constructing a new road arises due to the public demand or some strategic reason, a primary investigation is carried out to examine whether this road is necessary or not. And then the following points are to be kept in mind at the time of such investigation. First point, the total population benefited by the project, then the number of villages, towns, industrial places, etc. to be connected should be noted, then agricultural products industrial products, minerals, etc. are likely to be conveyed through the proposed road and thus help the development of trade in the country. Then prospect of tourism, if any, has to be mentioned. Similarly, strategic importance for the defense of the country. Then we will see the project report on water supply scheme. In, in that, we are going for a recurrent survey. When water supply scheme is to be prepared for a newly developed town or city, or an already existing scheme has to be expanded, a primary investigation has to be conducted on the concerned area and a primary re report prepared regarding implementation of the scheme. <coughs> During recognizance, the following point should be noted. The total area to be covered, then the existing population, habits of people, types of industries, etc. Existing sources of water for drinking and other purposes are also considered. An index sketch is to be prepared showing the population density at a different zones, trend of development of the town or city, then the intensity of public demand for the water supply scheme. Then we will consider the demand of water. The water supply scheme is never prepared only for present population. It should be <coughs> designed to serve the probable population after at least three decades. So while taking up a water supply scheme, the demand of water for the next three decades should be ascertained first. Then the total water demand is estimated considering the following points. <coughs> first point, the present population is determined and then the population of the next three decades is estimated by usual method. Then the daily rate of water demand is worked out depending on the habit of people, types of industries, sewage system, fire demand and other factors. Then the total demand for the peak hour is estimated depending on the method of water supply and then source of water. After computation of the demand of water for the scheme, an investigation is carried out for finding a suitable source of water which is adequate in respect of quantity and quality. The investigation is carried out based on the following consideration. First is surface source. The surface source may be in the form of perennial river, inundation river, large lake etc. 
in a perennial reservoir the quantity of water may be adequate but the quality should be examined in order to establish that excessive treatment is not required in an unconditioned reservoir the quantity is not adequate in this case an artificial reservoir has to be prepared by constructing a weir across the reservoir sometimes a dam or a barrage may be constructed for this purpose in large lake the quality may be reliable but the quantity should be examined for adequacy by studying the water level throughout the year again a suitable intake point should be located so that supply of water based on the gravity may be implemented if the country slope does not permit implementation of gravity system supply has to be done through an elevated reservoir in such a case pump house has to be constructed and then underground source if an underground source is located and found to be adequate in all respect deep tubewells should be sunk at a suitable points in different zones in such a case water is supplied through a direct pumping system then preparation of topographic map for implementation of water supply scheme a topographic map of the town or city has to be prepared the topographic map should indicate in the location of roadways railways houses beaches high grounds etc the nature of ground surface is represented in relief by color shading contour lines hatcheries etc then layout map of the scheme on the prepared topographical map the layout of the scheme is marked by suitable different colors convention or any suitable convention so that work can be conducted in different <coughs> pages the layouts should not should include the following information the zone and type of intake work the zone and unit of treatment plant the method of conveyance from uh, from the intake point to the <coughs> treatment point the zone and type of storage reservoir the network of main pipe lines and the network of distribution system specific points such as position of check holes fire hydrants inspection chamber junction point etc then the location of compost for deep tubewell is also considered then map and drawing to be prepared the following maps and drawings have to be prepared for the scheme first a topographic map of town or city has to be drawn to a suitable scheme the layout map of scheme is also drawn to a suitable scheme then detailed drawing of intake works pump houses overhead reservoir etc are to be shown in the drawings then the office work the office work required includes preparation of estimate for the following first intake work purification plant then overhead reservoirs pump houses pipelines etc then compensation payable then other allied expenditures and the total cost of the schemes then the project report when all investigation work design and drawing estimation have been completed a report should be prepared and submitted to the higher authority for approval the report should contain information related to the following first introduction second necessity and background third justification of taking up the present scheme and procedure adopted for land acquisition then the detailed estimate of the scheme then the detailed specification for construction constructional work then conclusion and recommendation and then the maps to be prepared are topographic map layout map of schemes and detailed drawing of intake work treatment plant pump houses overhead reservoirs etc then following points should be considered whenever we are doing the recurrent survey for the road project first the magnetic bearing of the line alignment are measured by prismatic compass and noted in a field book then the distances around the alignment are measured approximately by pacing uh, and is taken the total area to be covered under the scheme has to be worked out the present population habits of population nature of colonies public places etc have to be considered an index map has to be prepared showing the different zones public places nature of colonies trend of development of the town etc also the population forecast has to be made for the next 3 decades then the topographic map the topographic map of the town or city is prepared showing the different colonies housing estates high value premises public places roads beaches high grounds etc using different color shades or symbols and then the division into different zones for successful implementation of the scheme the area of the town under the scheme is divided into 
different zone. This is the because the method of garbage collection and sewage system may vary from zone to zone. Using some color convention, the different zones are marked in the topographical map. Then skeleton map for garbage collection. To ensure easy disposal of garbage, in the position of garbage collection centers, dustbin, etc. should be marked on the topographic map so that vehicles employed for the collection and disposal may move easily without causing any inconvenience to the public. <coughs> the location of the dumping place should be marked on the skeleton map at a suitable area for far away from the locality. A specific route should be indicated for the collection and transport of the garbage. After recurrent survey, a suitable alignment or alignments are selected for preliminary location survey for detailed investigation to obtain most economical alignment. The preliminary survey is done in the following ways. First point, the starting point of the project is marked by pillar. Then the file leveling is done to connect the nearby GTS, that is Great Technological Survey Benchmark or Permanent Benchmark with the starting point of the project. Then a prismatic compass survey is conducted to prepare a route survey map covering about 50 meters on both sides of the alignment. Sometimes a plane table survey is done in order to obtain the route survey map. Then the longitudinal leveling is done along the alignment at regular intervals say 20 meter or 40 meter. Then the magnetic bearing of each line should be noted. Then following maps or drawings are prepared. They are topographical map to suitable scale showing different zones. Then the skeleton map of garbage collection. Similarly, skeleton map of underground sewer lines should be shown and the map should be prepared to a suitable scale. Then design and drawing of treatment plant. Then detailed drawing of compose. All these drawings should be required in the water supply scheme. Then office work. The office work required involves preparation of estimate for the following the underground sewer line, the treatment plant, the purchase of vehicle for garbage collection, compensation payable, the total cost of scheme. Then in the project report, after completion of all investigation work, design work, estimate, the report has to be prepared and submitted to the higher authorities for approval. The report should include information on the following. First, introduction. Second, necessity. Third, justification of taking up the present schemes and procedure adopted for land acquisition, then the detailed estimate of the scheme and detailed specification for the construction. Then the project report, when all investigation work, design and drawing, estimation have been completed, a report should be prepared and submitted to the higher authority for approval. The report should contain information related to the following. First, introduction. Second, necessity and background. Third, justification of taking up the present scheme and procedure adopted for land acquisition, then the detailed estimate of the scheme, then the detailed specification for construction, constructional work, then conclusion and recommendation, and then the maps to be prepared are topographic map, layout map of schemes and detailed drawing of intake work, treatment plant, pump houses, overhead reservoirs, etc. refer figure 12.3 a and b in which the port complex is located in the near the natural basin and it is protected by the basin from the waves even if you see in the figure number b that is artificial basin created by providing the breakwater so that port complex is protected then the depth of water near the shore should be more than 10 meter. The tidal effect of wave and wind effect on the shore should be comparatively low. And considerable open space should be available near the shore for construction of terminal buildings and other allied structures. <coughs> then hydrographic survey. So survey is conducted to measure the depth of water near the shoreline. Identify obstacles near the shore and determine the variation of the shoreline during low and high tides. Hydrographic survey is conducted according to the following steps. First, baseline is taken along the shoreline and sections are marked perpendicular to it 
at regular intervals of say 30 meter. Then the depth of water at regular intervals of say 10 meter is found out by pathometer or echo sounder. A contour map is prepared to know the nature of seabed. Then the water levels attained to low and high tides should be noted and so should be the scoring effect of the waves. A tide was is established at the shore to note the variations. Then the velocity of water current is measured by current meter or subsurface float. Then soil survey. A stable foundation is essential for marine structure. Therefore, any intensive soil survey that is investigation should be conducted along the coastal line. In such a way, in a such a survey, boring is done along the shoreline and on the seabed at regular intervals and at specific point. The result of sign investigation are studied thoroughly in order to ensure stable foundation for marine structures. Then selection of site. Considering all the essential factors for an ideal port, a complex suitable site is selected. The master plan of the complex is prepared to suit in the selected site. After recurrent survey, a suitable alignment or alignments are selected for preliminary location survey for detailed investigation to obtain most economical alignment. The preliminary survey is done in the following ways. First point, the starting point of the project is marked by pillar. Then the file leveling is done to connect the nearby GTS, that is Great Technological Survey Benchmark or Permanent Benchmark with the starting point of the project. Then a prismatic compass survey is conducted to prepare a route survey map covering about 50 meter on both sides of the alignment. Sometimes a plane table survey is done in order to obtain the route survey map. Then the longitudinal leveling is done along the alignment at regular intervals say 20 meter or 40 meter. Then the magnetic bearing of each line should be noted in the level book. Then cross sections are taken at regular intervals say 100 meter and permanent benchmark should be established as suitable places along the alignment for future references. Thank you.